if you were involved with a pathological narcissist, then understand that you were not in a normal relationship. And what I mean by that is you weren't in a mutually beneficial relationship. You were actually in an abuse cycle. Pathological narcissists do not have the ability to get into mutually beneficial relationships with people. Their relationship style is more so similar to parasitism. So this is how mosquitoes operate, leeches, tapeworms, fleas, ticks, etc. The narcissistic abuse cycle starts off with love bombing or idealization. And this is where the narcissist starts the relationship off on a high. So they may flatter you by giving you excessive false compliments. They may give you gifts, take you on trips, and so on. So the idealization or the love bombing phase is what I may also call the charm to disarm phase. Because right after the idealization or the love bombing, then comes the devalue. And in the devalue phase, the narcissist pretty much switches everything around. It's kind of like a bait and switch. And here is where the verbal abuse comes in, the psychological abuse, the mind games, and so on. Then eventually follows, this follows the discard, where the narcissist, for whatever the reason, feels like you are no longer worthy and they essentially will discard you like an object because you are being objectified. And then this normally follows another phase that we call the Hoover. And the Hoover got its name from the famous vacuum company where they'll try to drag you back into the abuse cycle. So things will feel like it is up and down because you're not in a normal relationship. You are in an abuse cycle or you are being trauma bonded. Essentially, what you're looking at here is Stockholm Syndrome. It is when victims fall in love with their abuser because initially they do not realize that this person is an abuser. So I want you to understand that there is nothing that you could have done differently. This is an abuse cycle. It is pathological. And when we're talking about pathological narcissists here, understand that anything is pathological is talking about a dis-ease or a disorder. So you're dealing with highly disordered individuals. You're talking about a severe psycho-spiritual illness. These people are highly underdeveloped souls or what the clinicians, clinicians call a personality disorder. Their entire personality is disordered. They really did not develop adequately. Pathological narcissists would be closely related to unripened fruits. They did not grow properly. So they're already adults, but beneath the veil, they did not develop the adequate emotional processing skills, mental processing skills, and their willpowers are also compromised. So they're going to be very highly impulsive and compulsive individuals. It is important to understand that you cannot have a healthy relationship with a pathological narcissist. Pathological narcissists are like Peter Pan or adult brats. They did not again develop adequately. In a narcissistic relationship, you actually more so are going to be their surrogate parent because these people, again, did not develop internally to the age of adulthood. And most pathological narcissists, again, behind the physical, are somewhere between the ages of about 5 and 12 years old. Again, we're talking about unripened fruit. They did not develop adequately. We're talking about stunted growth and there's nothing that you could have done differently to change this and when it comes to the discard or really the entire abuse cycle pathological narcissists are what we may call sadists and who is a sadist a sadist is someone that takes pleasure in causing chaos harm and humiliation to others and this is why oftentimes you will see where they provoke you 
or they start drama out of nowhere and they will have a smirk on their face. You're dealing with highly sadistic individuals. And this really tracks back to their dysfunctional family system. And pathological narcissists generally come out of two types of dysfunctional family systems. So one is where they were overindulged and or underindulged. So we're talk what we're talking about here is spoiling. And spoiled children end up rotten. And this is what you're experiencing in the relationship the man child or woman child the other types of pathological narcissists grow up in what i call the dysfunctional type the shameless type of dysfunctional family systems so there could have been people in their family systems that were committing various crimes somebody in the family system was maybe an alcoholic um, highly abusive etc so again not very good role models so what happens is when the narcissist was young, they modeled these dysfunctional adults. So now they are an dysfunctional adult. Those were the people that they were modeling. And in their mind, they believe that their inappropriate behavior is acceptable. You're dealing with people that are highly grandiose. If you take a look at the NPD diagnostics, that you can find in the DSM and the DSM is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Illnesses. And this is essentially what clinicians, psychotherapists, psychologists use. So when you take a look at the diagnostic criteria, it really centers around three main characteristics. And that is number one, their grandiosity. So you're dealing with people that believe that they are superior to others without merit. Number two is they require excessive amounts of attention admiration and validation and number three is they are empathy impaired and the empathy impairment that we're talking about here is that they do not have the ability to adequately put themselves in other people's shoes so you're dealing with someone that is going to harm you and they will not care because they do not have empathy they are empathy impaired they are filled with apathy so clinicians need five or more of the traits that you see listed here to diagnose someone. However, I want to make it abundantly clear to you that anyone that you encounter with one or even two of these characteristics is going to be a very toxic individual. Pathological narcissists are people that are living predominantly through their ego. And this is why you always need to boost their ego. And the ego has an insatiable desire. It cannot be filled. You're dealing with people that are walking black holes. They are empty vessels. They are empty barrels. And empty barrels make the most noise. It is important that you understand that misery loves company. And you will be miserable if you stay entangled with a pathological narcissist. These people only have access to negative emotions. They are based in shame, rooted in their shame and unable to move past their pride. They believe that nothing is wrong with their behavior. And if they believe that nothing is wrong with their behavior, then, then, then they are not going to change. Perfect people do not need to change. Pathological narcissists want you to adjust yourself to their abuse. You are nothing more to them than a boot licker and a butt kisser. What they want from you is your subservience. They do not want your love or your empathy. If you give pathological narcissists your empathy, you will see where they will weaponize it. They believe, and this is how they think, they believe that empathy is a weakness. And weaponizing your empathy is actually one of their main manipulation tactics, along with gaslighting and triangulation, blame shifting, emotional blackmail, etc. Pathological narcissists do not want your empathy. They want your attention, your admiration, your validation, and your reflection. You're dealing with people that need you to boost their ego. They're living predominantly through their ego. They're living through a false self. And again, 
there is nothing that you could have done differently to change these circumstances. You're dealing with someone with arrested development. And again, behind the physical veil, you will see where if we were to put all of these narcissists together, they behave somewhere between the ages of about 5 and 12 years old. So if we were to make this an average, then we're talking about a maladaptive third grader, somewhere around the age of 7 or 8 years old. And when I make these videos, I'm talking to adults, people that are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, probably even 80s, etc. Pathological narcissists stopped evolving somewhere in their developmental years. Narcissism is a regressive dis-ease. It is a disorder. And it is important to understand that there are 8 billion people on this planet and we are not all evolving. Some people are devolving. We're not all progressing. Some people are regressing. Just like the pathological narcissist. So again, I want you to not blame yourself for this. There is nothing that you could have done. This is what pathological narcissists do. They deceive people to get into relationships with them. And this is essentially how they get their needs met. You're dealing with people that are very parasitic in nature. They can't really give you love and you also cannot really love a pathological narcissist. They cannot receive your love. What they want again is your attention, admiration, your validation and your reflection. You're dealing with people that have Peter Pan syndrome. So as you go through your grief process, then this means that you're going to let go of the shame that you endured during the relationship, the, the shame of feeling that you were not good enough. And the narcissist probably gaslit you into believing that you were not good enough. This, has, this again has nothing to do with you. Pathological narcissists are people that have severe arrested development. So as you go through your healing process, you will see where you're going to be letting go of the shame, letting go of the guilt. And in this toxic relationship again, the narcissist was probably guilt tripping you, blaming you for problems in the relationship because you're dealing with people that you cannot hold accountable again. You can't hold children accountable. And again, this is the pathological narcissist. They did not develop to the level of rational thinking so that they could be accountable. You get accountability when you get to rational thinking, which is the green area here on the Hawkins scale. Pathological narcissism exists below the line of courage. Again, they're based in shame and they cannot move past their pride. So as you go through your healing process, you will see where you're going to be letting go of shame. You're going to be letting go of guilt. You probably are dealing with a lot of anger and resentment. And as you go through and process these negative emotions, you will see where there is nothing that you could have done differently to change the circumstances. You were in an abuse cycle. And you will see where you will find love and peace and joy on the other side of abuse. Once you process the negative emotions, and you are able to transcend. And this is why you hear me state often on this channel that you must get the courage to walk away and stay away. Because once you descend below the line of courage, if you get your emotions too stuck in a low vibration, if you get stuck in the third dimension, then if the pathological narcissist is the abuser, then in this particular circumstance, then you are going to be the victim. Because you're going to be trying to fix them. You're going to be trying to pour into them. Anything that you pour into the narcissist is going to evaporate. Narcissists are a walking black hole. They are empty barrels. They cannot be filled. They are a bucket with a whole bunch of holes in it. Anything that you pour into it is going to be lost into oblivion. Narcissists do not want healthy relationships. Again, you're dealing with people that are based in shame and they cannot move past their pride. 
You're dealing with people that believe that they are always right. Perfect people, again, do not need to change. They're perfect. Perfect people do not need to grow. And this is why their growth is stunted. All right, so we're going to stop off here today. Understand that as you go through this grief process, you're going to be letting go of a whole bunch of negative emotions. Again, none of their behavior has anything to do with you. It has everything to do with the fact that they are highly disordered, dysfunctional, diseased individuals. All right. As always, kind people, if you appreciate the content, please give us a like, share, and subscribe if you have any questions or feedback. Go ahead and leave that in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next video.